Um, hello, my name is Ton. I'm part of the SAS time group. For today, I'm going to be going through with some slides on how to use uh, Babbage. Um, to use, um, well, all data tips and tricks on on how to connect to uh, Babbage using all data. Let me start by bringing up my slide today, and then we can start. So here's the agenda for today. I'm going to be spending the next 20 minutes working to some slide points and hopefully I can connect to my incident of working today because uh, today is the first day of transition to open text and we're having some difficulty connecting to the network for my machine. But uh, yeah, so the Brexit, uh, we're going to be talking about Brexit for all data. And then I would try to demo how to access old data using Power BI. And then next, how to access old data using Postman. Uh, hopefully this will be within 20 minutes. And then the last 20 minutes, uh, 10 minutes, we're gonna be having an open session on, uh, uh, if you have any question regarding uh, the material I uh, went over in the last 20 minutes, okay? So um, first, uh, let's talk about the prerequisites for accessing old data. So the first thing we want to look at is um, the permissions of, of the groups that you'll be using the uh, API key. So the first thing we want to do is go into the, our SharePoint, uh, shared, uh, shared workspace and go to the permission tabs. And in the permission tabs, you want to go to generals, uh, select your role first, and then go to general uh, system actions permissions and make sure that you have access to old data. And once you create your user roles and then confirm that they have access to old data, you want to create an API key. And in your API key, you want to select your roles and select the workspace that the role should have access to. And when you create an API key, you can then make sure that you save it somewhere so you can use that when you connect to um, uh, to uh, H using um, Power BI or Postman. And then the th third item that you need to check is uh, your parameter settings. So you wanna go again to your sh uh, shared space and go to parameters. And the documentation indicates that you can, uh, you should enable support on this called basic authentications. And for all data using for developer, you want to also enable support on this called basic, on this called authentication, on this called for, uh, on this called all data. So since I'll be demoing both uh, Power BI and Postman for developer, I'm going to enable both for now. So let's have a look at um, quickly. So what's the point of having O data? So you, you have within your uh, Octane instance, let's say you create a widget and you, you created something called a widget called traceability report. And you want to be able to do the same thing in Power BI and even Postman to do anonymization tools. Um, so I'm going to try to walk you through how to reproduce the same from Power BI. So let's kick off by bringing up Power BI. Now, once you have uh, Power BI open, you want to go to Get Data. And 
and you want to select all data feed. Now, the first thing you want to do is enter a URL. So um, let me paste in the URL that I have here already composed. So it's going to be a value age uh, host string followed by OData v4. And then we have our share space and our ID for our share space and our workspace and ID for our workspace. Now this is if you want to connect to a single workspace, but if you intend to do a cross project report, you may also want to modify this URL to include a cross workspace and then do an asterisk if you want to connect to all the workspace or if you want to just specify specific workspace, you can do that as well by just typing the ID of your workspace as follows. So here I will be connected to two workspace. But for now, let's just look at just connecting the one uh, workspace. So I have here workspace uh, number 27001. Click OK. Now, since I've, I have previously connected to this safe space, I, um, I don't need to authenticate, but if you were to do it for the first time, you would get a, a basic authentication window. So let me close this window and let's see what happened if I connected, haven't connected uh, previously. Let's buy, I'm gonna paste in the same URL, but let's, this time I'm just gonna make, modify the workspace ID. So it assumed that I never logged in before, and then I will see an authentication window. Here, if you do see this window, uh, you want to choose basic, and then you want to enter your API key that you created earlier. So let me do that right now. And again, it's like my connection string. So once you authenticate using your API key, you will see all the collection available for you. There are around 59 collections that are available. And for our demo, I'm going to be trying to reproduce uh, traceability reports in Valley H, in particular uh, test coverage reports. So I can do that by selecting uh, test collections. Now, I want to see requirement coverage rate as well in this report. Um, uh, since I've done this before, I know that the test object here will also include requirement coverage, so I'm not even going to include requirements. So I'm going to, uh, once I select my test collection, I will see the number of the button here. I don't want to load it in Power BI yet. I want to transform the data first before I load in Power BI. So I'm going to click on transform data. So in here, I'm going. To, I, I'm seeing all the fields that are available within the test collection object, and it's maybe that I want to limit the number of columns I want to include in my Power BI in a model because it's maybe just too much information that I really don't need for the report. So I'm going to select uh, choose columns. In here, I may just select a few columns that I want to see. So I want to include the ID of the test case, maybe test name, and maybe also phase. And then at the bottom, I'll see cover requirements. So I want to include cover requirements because I want to create a traceability ports between tests and my requirements. And then click OK. And as you can see here, phase and covered are their own collections. And so I want to just select the field I need for my reports. So for phase, I just choose, uh, need a name. So I click on names 
and for requirements i may just want the id of the requirements and maybe the requirement name and then at the top um, i do see my column name um, i just may want to rename them so i can understand them better Here I do see that there are a number of tests that have no requirement coverage. Um, in usually in the widgets in a validation, it may be ignored. It may only show you the test coverage for tests that have requirement coverage. But for now, I I may want to know what tests are not being covered as well. So I, I will include this for now. So I'm happy with my my uh, my transformations. So I'm going to. Uh, Click on close and apply. And depending how much data you have, it may take a while to uh, load it out, uh, data into Power BI. So that's why you may uh, do the step I do, which is to limit the, the columns. So it takes less time to load and improve the performance of your reports. Okay, so I have here my uh, my data loaded in Power BI. I can then see the data in the grid. I can then take this data export to Excel if I want to, uh, or I can just also go here and create a uh, visual graph from from the Power uh, Power BI data. So I can select a graph here, for example, and I. I was I have on my right hand side here all the columns I selected. So, for example, I may decide to create a, a graph where I have the uh, requirement name as my x-axis, and then maybe the test ID as my y-axis, and then uh, I have here on the right hand side, kind of similar to the traceability requirement uh, test coverage requirement coverage uh, graph that can generate within uh, by the age i can then also maybe if i want i can also um modify the, the graph a little bit to show my data label and you see the count um so you can see this that with Power BI, I can extend the, the reporting capabilities within Octane and generate uh, similar uh, reports within Power BI. Now quickly, let's have a look at how you can generate uh, data from Postman using REST API. So let me bring up Postman. So all data for the developer allow you to use REST API to connect to ValueAge, authenticate, and retrieve data using REST calls. Now I've already built up all the requests here. So, so the first thing you want to do when you're using REST is you want to authenticate. So there's two ways to authenticate. You can use the JSON login where you provide the URL, uh, other way to authentication sign in, and then use post. And then in your post body, you want to include the, uh, the API, REST uh, API client ID and your secret. And then 
if you're successful uh, enter the information you can then click on send and you should set a get a 200 uh, uh, okay status and if you look at the cookies it, it will provide you with cookies you can use this cookie for all subsequent uh, requests uh, this will improve your performance uh, when you do multiple queries after your initial login sessions. You also have the option of doing basic authentications. When using basic authentications, you want to create a header called authorizations. And then the values for your authorization headers would be uh, the, the encrypted, base64 encryption of your API, uh, API key colon and the secret and you want to encrypt it using base64 and then prefix it that with basic and that will allow you to authenticate using basic authentications and you can see here that it works with basic authentication as well um, so once you uh, uh, log in using your API key you can do a number of things for example uh, you can look at the available resource so if you just provide this URL all the way to your workspace and click on send without uh, doing anything, uh, without adding any other query options. You can see here it provides you with all the available collections that you can queries, such as the one which we are interested in, which is just uh, the test object. But if you want more details, you can also add the dollar sign metadata options. And that will allow you to look at in more details what are the fields, uh, the fields that are available within the objects and also the collections as well. So for example, you see here, let's have a look at our test objects. So I'm gonna look, look at test object to see what fields are available. And you can see here, it has the question date, the um, descriptions, etc., the ID, and below that, also the covered underscore requirement objects that we want to use to uh, to query for the ID of the of the requirement that's uh, that linked to the test cases. So now that we know what the metadata look like, so if we want to query for test, we can provide uh, um, provide the URL and use get. We're gonna use get for all data, by the way. So use get request and then provide our URL all the way to our workspace. And then for our options here, we can do a select option to get the fields that we want. So in this case, I do a select on ID, name and descriptions. So when I send my request, I get the ID, name and description of my test cases. I can do an order by by using the order by options. And here I'm ordering by ID ascending order and if, if I want to do a complex query I can combine the two options together by using the ambassand sign so here I'm doing a select as well an order by as you can see it's ordered by ID here and the first item is 77001 and then 7702 etc I can do a filter as well. In a filter, I do a filter on ID, and I specify ID. I can do a top. I can use the top option to show the top uh, 10 items in my collections. And I can also do paging as well. So here, it's paging uh, uses skip, which means tell me to skip the first 10 record and then get me the, the top 10 record of the collections. If I want to go next page, then I would say skip 20 and use the top 10 again. So I can use this option to page through my collections. Now in REST, if you're using REST API, it usually gives you JSON format by default. Here, you can switch format to use XML if you want by using the format option. And lastly, uh, we were trying to reproduce the requirement coverage. We want to be able to, to get the test ID and the ID of, our, uh, of the requirement covering the test. So I can do that by using the expand options as well. So here I get my 
the ID of my test and the ID of the requirement covering the, the test cases. And as you can see here, it, using the expand option allow me to get the covered requirement ID. And once you finish doing an API call, you want to do a logout. And that's will log out of your sessions. So that's pretty much it. Uh, I think I went over a little bit. 